I know I had like, you know, one friend and we thought basically the world was f***ed up. All I can do is just fall so deep for two And speak my point of view But it's not safe It's not safe I don't like walking around without people thinking, geez, you know, something's wrong with him. I like it, you know? I was the school freak, well, one of them. My yearbook, you know, everybody would say, to one weird guy. We were freaks. Had I tried a little harder, I'm sure I could have fit into the mold, but it wasn't something I really aspired to. I wasn't on the football team, and I'm just trying to be funny, just to just survive, just so someone will talk to me. I gained 40 pounds out of depression, which automatically makes you even less popular than you could ever imagine being. Nothing like being Miss Popularity. Yeah. yeah. I thought I would never kiss a girl. I, I thought I'd never have a girlfriend. I was like, wow, a girl likes me? The school freak? The weirdo? I think when somebody is, is blessed with a, a, a certain kind of, kind of originality and, and extraordinary sensitivity and intelligence, it's very threatening to people. Here's what I think of your dumb pocket protector, you, you stupid dumb thing! Obviously, since the Big Bang, you know, people have been picking on other people. Put him up, you, you nerd! We were geeks. I was misunderstood and beaten. Here comes the Nugget Patrol! Ah! And I got pounded by guys who later became Chicago Bears, you know, so I got pounded by the best of them. Cut it out, crater face! People need to have a pecking order. It's the same in the animal kingdom, you know, the, the lamest of the pack gets eaten. I got a good mind to slap your fat face! All the time they're telling you that you're nothing, they're either plotting your downfall or, or your path to greatness. It's up to you to pick. A freak who thinks for himself, dresses for himself, lives for himself, is a freak because by and large most people are followers. You don't need to follow me. You're all individuals. Yes, we're all individuals. I'm not. A lot of those people teasing those people are followers. A gang of a bunch of people just with no motivation of their own, no creativity of their own. I think we fear things that are different from ourselves. So anyone who has the balls to stick their head out and say something which isn't going to be popular um, risks being branded. But it, it pays off. All the great people in history have been different, whether it's been Christ or Alexander the Great or... Hermé Villachez! Einstein was weird. Einstein flunked mad. The most successful people were nerds in school. They regard themselves as aliens in their own worlds, a condition with which I am somewhat familiar. And now I see the guys that were the coolest in high school. I don't even know what they're doing now. Hey, why don't I pretend I didn't hear that? And you know, the smart guys, the guys that had it together were kind of quiet. They come out ahead. It's just weird. The people who are strange and often maligned will triumph in the end because they're strange and different. They've made them even stronger and stronger and more unique and more unique, and, and uh, they're probably doing exactly what they want to do today. Such is the case with film director Tim Burton, the mind's eye behind films like Batman, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, and Edward Scissorhands. Burton has become one of the most successful and sought-after filmmakers of the 90s, due in part to his eccentricities that helped him develop his creative vision. Weirdo, weirdo, weirdos, yeah. I know you are, but what am I? The weirdos are probably the best. When I think of a weirdo, I usually think of somebody who is an individual and free and it's something that everybody should strive for because everybody's different. People ignore the strange and unusual. I myself am strange and unusual. I grew up in Burbank and in Burbank, California, there's no seasons. It's kind of like growing up on an empty canvas. You're forced to create your own world. It's showtime. Cool. Nobody seemed to really like me, I don't know. Nobody just seemed to really uh, like me that much. I am utterly alone. Which allowed me to have a lot of uh, free time to kind of uh, 
wander around in your own uh, head, you know. When you're in pain, you need some sort of release, like drawing, thinking, writing, creating. thrilling experience of my whole life. The characters in the films I've done, basically, it's the way I felt growing up. The Edward Scissorhands character for me was about the desire to connect with people. Hold me. I can't. There's something sad about it being separated, but there's also a kind of a wonderful freedom because it's like when people brand you as a uh, freak of some sort, it allows you to kind of act freakish without people really getting on your case. All right, let's try it again. Quiet, folks. Everybody has the power to create whatever in their mind that they want to create, really, and they can conform or not conform. Actually, it's fun not listening to anybody and just doing what you want to do. <laughs> Tonight at 11 on the state, we're going to shoot the last American buffalo. I'm joking. There's plenty of buffalo left, but it'll still be a kick to see. You won't believe how hard those mothers go down. Mickey and Mallory. What do you think of Mickey and Mallory, huh? Best thing to happen to mass murder since mass. Yeah, but uh, they're way cooler. Sure, they're a couple of sick, twisted killers, but with ratings like this... I'll never have more fun in my life! Who's gonna zap them? Woody Harrelson, Juliette Lewis, Robert Downey Jr., and Tommy Lee Jones, an Oliver Stone film, Natural Born Killers, rated R. Starts Friday, August 26th at a theater near you. High school can be tough, especially if you've been labeled a freak nerd or weirdo. We met up with three students who have just survived a very hard year. When I was younger, I had like a hard time with a lot of people, you know, who really sort of seemed to ostracize me for some reason or whatever. I was like one of the only people in my school to have long hair at, in like a school with lots of people who just, you know, really tried to just be the same and do the same things and just, you know, I, I didn't understand that I wasn't the same and I tried to just be who I was, but it's hard to do that when everybody else wants you to be like them. Fill up, I will break you, Phil. Oh, man. Those were like some of the hardest years of my life to get through. Some people in school just call me a freak. The most difficult part is when Friday night rolls around and I have nothing to do or, you know, I have to do it on my own and Monday comes and everyone's talking about what they did over the weekend. 100 years of solitude. That's what I'm reading right now. That's like my life, solitude. <laughs> do you ever get lonely? Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a lonely person. I would go for walks and just sing like song lyrics in my head, walk around thinking, you know, I don't need anybody, you know, no one can hurt me. But I realize that I do need someone because I don't like to be alone. I need people too. I think athletics is an important role in school. I know I'm not aggressive when it comes to sports. Gym's no uh, trip to the park, if you know what I mean. If you're uh, the last kid picked, you know, that kind of feeling, you know? <laughs> I mean, nobody enjoys that. I felt like I've let my father down sometimes. I think my father wanted an athlete. He played sports all through high school, you know? I mean, I'm sure he was disappointed, but I think he understands that, you know, I'm happy the way that I am. I mean, sports are just not for me. And uh, I think he's come to understand that. I really enjoy playing the cello. That's one thing that I do that really makes me feel good about myself. It's one thing that I'm really good at. <laughs> if you're really thinking about concentrating about it and you, you put like a lot of emotion into it, it it's, it's such a great feeling. Music is a release for me. You just 
get up and you just let out your emotion and that's like a great thing. That's like with painting too, you know, you're just getting down, you know, color onto a canvas. It's a really important thing to create, I think. From early on, I couldn't compete with the girls whose daddies would buy them anything. So I just began to look for other things and my painting gives me certain freedom. I can paint what I want to and I don't have to paint it a certain way. Art has helped me define who I am. I tried to fit in, but I couldn't do it and I realized that and thankfully I realized that pretty early instead of having to be trapped in faking it. I've tried pretending to be someone I'm not and it's just not worth it. I realized it's not my problem anymore. It's not me that has to change. I'm perfectly happy the way I am. I have my music. I have a few, like, really great friends. And that's all I need, and I wouldn't do anything to change it. <laughs> I know who I am. I know I'm going to do well in life and be successful. And nothing that they did is going to stop me from getting what I want. Who wants normalcy? If my life was a page in a book, I'd want it to be filled with exclamation points and like big capital letters and things, you know, that would be kind of cool. Nearly everyone's felt alienated or lonely at one point or another, but for some, these feelings can be overwhelming. For people suffering from clinical depression, feelings of isolation can lead to tragic results. Fortunately, there are many places for depressed people to get help. We talk to Youth Empowerment Association, or YAY, a group of young people who have personally dealt with issues like depression and suicide and who are committed to helping other young people cope with these problems. Youth Empowerment Association. We started YAY about a year and a half ago. It was started by myself and other young people, all of whom dealt in our own lives with different adolescent problems, depression, feeling suicidal, abuse. And we really felt that more young people needed to be involved in working towards solving problems that affect young people. A lot of people don't understand that depression is an illness that needs to be treated and you can't just say to someone who has depression, you know, snap out of it or get over it or cheer up, you know, that's like trying to say to a diabetic, you know, get over it. My problem as far as as having depression started when I was very young, probably even from like when I, before kindergarten. By the time I was eight or nine years old, I really had already begun thinking about dying, thinking about killing myself. I thought I was this horrible, despicable, deplorable person. And so rather than wait around for people to hurt me or reject me, which I was sure that they would do, it was safer for me to reject everyone first. I was keeping away people who maybe would have hurt me and would have rejected me, but I was keeping away everyone, including those people who maybe were really trying to reach out to me. Nobody knew what was really going on at home with me or what was going on inside, and I ran out of energy and hope and tried to kill myself. Everybody hurts sometimes. My life was in black and white until I got treatment and now it's like my life is in color. And the dif difference is just so profound. For the first time I had energy and I had hope and the world seemed full of possibilities and just everything changed profoundly. If you have depression and you're feeling suicidal, it's very, very hard to ask for help. People need to be aware of that because it may be up to friends, family, people around the depressed person to really recognize what's going on and step in and do something. Don't keep it a secret and know that depression is an illness, know that there's something that can be done, treatment is possible, change is possible, no matter how desperate and hopeless you feel. It's re change is really possible.
For a lot of people, the last thing you want to be when you're a teenager is different. Many students spend a lot of time, money, and effort just trying to fit in. But if you're swimming outside the mainstream, high school can seem interminable. Enter college, an opportunity to express your individuality and to be whomever you want to be. Such is the case here at Wesleyan University, where we found a society that has perfected the practice of misfitting in. The house and its residents live up to its name, eclectic. I think eclectic is basically a catch-all for everybody that doesn't fit in anywhere else. It's just a place where strange people can come together do strange things. Eclectic is like a big carnival. Freaks and weirdos abound. Nothing ever that's boring on a Tuesday night here. <laughs> Living at Eclectic is definitely permission to be whatever you want to be. Yay! All right, now keep in mind that Kennedy of Alternative Nation just might be seeing your face. Tonight's our semi-formal, and we have semi-formals twice a year, and they're usually fun. It's the only time during the year that we have a party just for eclectic members and their friends, so uh, we all look forward to it. The semi-formal is permission to be even more outrageous than everybody is normally. Ready to rock! People do think about eclectic as being a positive kind of force on campus, even if it is just because they know they always have a good time when they come here. When you come to an eclectic party, you're guaranteed to have a night where something will happen that has never happened to you at any other party, unless it's been another eclectic party. We started real slow. <laughs> Only about a hundred volts right now. A single shock. One day I woke up with an urge to build an electric chair. We set it up and we have guests and visitors sit down and we run current through them. Let's go, baby, let's go, it's all you! We make it seem like a, it's a big game, who can take the most voltage, but it's just terribly painful for them. All the way up, all the way up. It's starting to hurt now. It's great to humiliate people like that. I mean, I've been treated like by those people my whole life. The police are here. Basically, it's a noise complaint, right? Do you know who it was? The complaint? Yeah, that's irrelevant. Oh, you're okay. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, you know, we're not going to do it. What's relevant is the fact that we have a complaint. It's 2 o'clock. The party's over. And everybody's got to leave. I think a lot of the things we do are basically the equivalent of giving traditional values the middle finger. And right now, there's a movement within the school to get rid of the house. You gotta go home now, because public safety and the cops are here, and otherwise I'm gonna get arrested, and that would kind of suck. I've always been an outcast. Changed schools a lot. Was never really comfortable at any school I went to. And this is the one place I am really comfortable. It's the only thing that's kept me on campus. By being here, I haven't had to try to act a different way from how I feel like acting. You don't feel like you're a foreigner in, in a strange country or something. You know that you have people that are similar to you somewhere. Emotionally, I think the house offers you an opportunity to reach your full potential. College is the one time in your life when you can afford to make a lot of mistakes and it doesn't really ruin your life. And I think Eclectic is a place that really forces people to have strong ideas about what it is they want and who they are. That gives you a lot of self-confidence. I mean, I think I've, I've grown as a person from my own definition of what I want to be. That one was way too fast. Oh, shit. Blind acceptance of rules leads to a pretty bland existence. And a lot of rules are, are made to be broken. I mean, if someone doesn't break them, they'll be around forever, and that'd be a real shame. In 1991, the organizers of Lollapalooza, a summer music and mind fest, broke all the rules by crossing musical and cultural lines to create the ultimate celebration of individual expression. Here we go! Four years later, Lollapalooza's popularity continues to grow. Today, it is the vanguard of a new movement towards self-expression and acceptance. In what way does Lollapalooza celebrate individuality? What an absolutely 
fun question. I think just just the, the attitude of bringing together a lot of people that you can be who you want to be. Doesn't it seem cool to walk around? Doesn't it seem like, wow, this is like Wonderland. Anybody can go in there and not get their ass kicked. It's kind of nice. Long inclusive is celebrating the fact that it, it, it now has become the dominant aspect of youth culture, this whatever you want to call it, and it encompasses a lot of styles. So I don't think it's a celebration of what's not known, I think it's a celebration of what is. It, it, it exists. You're pretty much free to do whatever you want to do nowadays. There's some funny groups out there now. As you can look around, everybody's like from their own cultures and their all races, all creeds. The thing is, you can come as whatever you want and no one will give you a hard time about it. You can bump into someone and they won't try to sweat you, you know. <laughs> you know, everybody has to be their own person, you know. I mean, you can't always depend on, on other people to, to let yourself go the right path. Judy. a leader and I'm not really a follower but I just do what I gotta do. The whole vibe here at Lollapalooza is about doing your own thing yet out in the mainstream people still want to be followers. Why is that? Because they're really not really not down on like uh, style. Yeah, you your own style man you wouldn't need anyone else's. We're freaks because you know we're doing stuff and like We'll do it and then people will look at us like we're out of our minds and they'll kind of not want to get too close and they'll move over like a few aisles at the record store. I just want to get along. Are you an conformist, Kelly? No, she's just has an authority problem. <laughs> I don't know, I just don't see it as non-conformist. I just see it as probably the way that things should be. I don't know, I'd say we definitely are freaks and we're definitely nerds and we're definitely geeks. We're definitely all posers and proud of it. <laughs>